Um, okay, so hello everyone. And this is my week 9 presentation. Um, this one is problem. This one is problem 5 from, is a problem from chapter 5. I believe so. Let me just check. Okay, yeah, this is a problem from chapter 5, uh, it's, it's on section 5.10, and this is five point from problem 5.10, number 10. And it says that we, I, we have to write a formula using in one place predicates only, in particular not using the identity, sim identity symbol because it had been discussed in the chapter prior, in that very chapter that the identity symbol is a two place predicate that implies one but not both of sentences A and B in the preceding problem. And we have to explain briefly that statement. And the preceding problem is right here. It is uh, problem number nine. And it says that if f of x symbolizes x is a pig, what do each of the following assert about how many pigs are there? And we should explain briefly. And here we are given sentences A and sentences B. So first of all, um, if before we can write um, a sentence, we can, before we write a formula that will imply one of the two but not both, we will have first to understand what the what this statement really means. So for statement A, um, this <laughs> this sentence right here, um, uh, for there's an x for for oh wait um. There exists an x and there exists a y, there exists a z, and for all w such that if w implies w is equal to x or w is equal to y or w is equal to z. Yeah, it's very. I. Um, I assume that uh, every everybody is also confused with this statement, but if we. But it basically means that um, statement A says that there is at least three pigs or wait no there's at most three pigs and how can and how did I say so that there's at most if we are going to look at the chapter which I think um it's on 5.4 let me just share my screen with you okay. there we go Uh, on chapter 5.4, if uh, it says that if to say that there is at least one px, um, we will have to write that. But to say that there is exactly one with the property p, we must use the sign is equal to. And that breaks up into... There is, and to say that there is exact one p, we will have to write this equation. And this breaks up into there is at least one, one p and at most one p. And then it said, and then it also shows that, and then it also shows the the formula on how to show that there's there are exactly two p's, which is shown here. And as stated prior to in this chapter, that to say that there are exactly two p's, you have to use a the conjunction between the statement there is are at least two p's and there is at most two p's. So in in this statement. This is the statement that says that there are at least two p's. Since if you are going to, um, since it is already given here, and then this is the one that says there is at um, at most two p's. Um, notice the structure in this one. Now, if we are to combine to apply this one and then to combine this one, and that says that there are exactly two p's, then we can, and then if we are going to look at the at the at the sentence that has been given to us, let's go back to the word block. It is very similar. It is very, um, it is very similar. So statement A basically translates to there is at most three pigs. So what does that mean for us? It says that 
the requirement for to satisfy if we are going to write a formula for this one then it basically says that we will have to write a sentence that that says that um that will cater to either to no pigs or to up to three pigs because it's at most three pigs so from it's it's from zero to three basically and for the second one for sec statement b for all x for all y and there exists a z such that z is a pig and z is not equal to x and z is not equal to y um sure it's not very familiar to it's not a familiar sentence but then again it is also this one is also found in the book um i believe it's on chapter 5.5 um it's the chapter after this um show that the statement right here is another way of saying that there are at least four peaks and notice that if you are just going to take this one <laughs> it's just the same the it's just it's it's the same yeah it's the same and since this one is for at least four piece then we can say that this one is for at least three piece oops that this one is since um this um this send this question itself it says that we are to show that the statement right here is another way of saying that there are at least four pieces which is given right here and that is a lot but if you are going to do the problem that it will exactly show that the two statements are basically are basically equivalent or logically equivalent rather so we're so we have now translated the statements that are given to us and so we are now going to write a sentence and we're going to write a formula that applies to either one of them but not both and in here i found the statement this statement for all x not f of x or if you are going to translate it with fx saying that x is a pig then you can say that there is no pig and then if we are going to write this sentence oh no or rather if we are going to put this sentence as a premise and then the and then statement a as the conclusion we will get this truth tree <coughs> so of course, um, um, sentence one here is the premise, which is the statement that I had found. And step number two here is the denial of the conclusion. Sentence number two, rather. Then sentence number three is a is the continuation of the denial, which is I turned every existential quantifier into a universal quantifier and vice versa. And then I negated the contents of the, and then I negated the, the sentence and for this one yeah i will i negated i negated yeah i negated the contents and then what i did for this one is that for the universal quantifier since the um currently there i we did not we do not have we haven't named a variable yet we are going to name a for the three universal quantifiers here and that and that leaves us only with the existential quantifier to be left all right and we named a for the for x y and z and this can be seen here every x y and z in the statement on sentence number three became a and then we're going to apply the existential quantifier here and the variable i chose is b and so every w in here will became will become a b and with every quantifier now and with every quantifier now gone in the prior statements we are now ready to decompose this sentence number five 
and then we are going to be left with the and since that it say denial of an implication then the consequent then <laughs> then the first part should be true and the second part should be false and so since the, the first part is true so we will be with fb and then not the negation of this whole statement but then we have a since our since we have we have get sentence number one as a premise then we can name that then we can name then we can name not fb and if we are going to do if we were going to name not fb the tree will close because on sentence number six we already have fb due to the the composition of sentence number five and then we are named not fb uh, for sentence number one and that the tree will close meaning that the state the sentence there is no pig implies sentence number a sentence a if you're going to try it on sentence on state if we're going to write to try the formula on sentence number b however this is my result so again um sentence number one the sent the formula that i found as the premise and then the the denial of sentence number b sentence letter b rather and again the since we're going to deny we're going to negate this whole sentence every existential quantifier became a every universal quantifier rather becomes an existential one and vice versa and then you will negate this whole statement right here and and that is the result of sentence number three as to the composition as a as the composition of number two um sentence number four also follows from sentence number three as i applied every negation to its parts by the Morgan's law, so I negate every con. I negated the contents. Um, every conjunction becomes a disjunction, and the not z is equal to x becomes z is equal to x, and the same rule also applies to z is equal to y. And then, since the existential quantifiers are still running around, I should have put a parenthesis here. It's my bad. Since the existential the existential quantifiers are still looming. Then we can name now variables. So for here, I had named for the first existential quantifier, and I have named variable A, and for the second one, I named variable B. So this one becomes A, and this one becomes B, as seen here. And then for the for the universal quantifier, I had used I had used a and that will then apply here so every z in this in the statement will become a and then if we are going to apply sentence number one and we can use either either a or b i first used a for sentence number one as for sentence number seven so a result of sentence number one with me choosing for my existential for my variable for my variable a to be applied to sentence number one and then for sentence number eight it arose from sentence number five um this is the one with still a quanti with the universal quantifier and for every z i had put b instead and you can see that this process can never end so since there's literally no way to close this to close this tree because the statement um there's a not here it's a it's a negation it's for all x not f of x and since the negation of this statement will always yield a not f x not to mention it is also a disjunction so not to mention it's also a disjunction so everything might be equal but yeah, there's no way that there's there's no way that uh, the tree is not it's gonna end because there's no contradictory statements that will arise from this. So if you're going, so this impact, so we can, you can conclude that if you're going to 
apply this one to apply this statement to apply statement number b it cannot be meaning that this statement does not imply statement b and so we are going to explain the sentence since this statement translates to there is no pig then it makes sense that it's all, that that it can mean that there is that there is at most three pigs while it does not make sense for more statement number three which literally translates to there is at least three pigs because if see, if we're going to say that there's no pig then it can range from zero to three if you're going to apply it to statement number to statement letter a but if we're going to apply it to statement to statement letter b then it cannot be because um, at least three pigs means that there should be at three or more pigs and statement num and the statement that I have found cannot cannot do that. So yeah, that concludes my presentation and I hope you have a great day.